In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can activate physics simulation via sequencer and also modify it via the sequencer blueprint. So for example, I'll just press play here. This activates physics, triggers an explosion, but also modifies the physics as well via the level blueprint. So let's just jump straight into things now. Inside of Unreal Engine, I've already created level sequence and I've got this open here. I'm gonna drag in a sphere from the place actors shapes section and just place this into the level, something like this, and just drag it above the surface. After that, I'm gonna drag the sphere from the world outliner into sequencer. And the quickest way to add the simulate physics track is if you look in the details of the sphere object, because we've added this into the sequencer, we've got some keyframing options on some of the rows and we've got simulate physics in the physics section. And I'm just gonna click on the keyframe button there. Now I'm gonna drag the timeline scrubber from zero to 45 frames or thereabouts, it's fine. This time I'm just gonna press a keyframe button inside of sequencer. But for the second keyframe, we've got a option, a checkbox to simulate physics. I'm just gonna tick that. And now from that keyframe onwards, it will be simulating physics. Now there are a couple of other things we need to do before this will work. The first thing is we've got a transform track here and this will conflict with the physics when it starts simulating. So we either need to just delete it. We can just press delete with it selected or if you want to keep your transform track because you may have some keyframing before the physics happens we can at the point of the timeline scrubber and the point that physics kicks in we can right click edit trim section to the right so from 45 frames onwards in this case the transform track will no longer have any effect the second thing we need to check is make sure this sphere is movable so in this details panel at the top we've got mobility static stationary and movable make sure this is set to movable what you might find is that when you delete the transform track it changes from movable to static so even if it was movable to start with it might go back to static and now that we've done this we can actually test it so to test it we do need to make sure that the level is in simulation so at the top we can start simulating the game and then we can press play and there you go so let's just stop the simulation so as you can see, that is pretty straightforward. The sphere isn't doing much. I mean, if it was on a slope or something like that, it would start rolling around. Now let's just say you want to actually add some movement into this sphere from the moment that physics is activated. So there are a couple of different ways you can do this. One of them is you can actually just add some keyframes into the transform track. So you could maybe at frame 43 or 44, even just before physics kicks in, you could keyframe a position. And then at 45, you would keyframe another position. So you'd have some movement. That's fine, you can do it that way. What I actually find is better and gives me more control is actually connect this to the sequencer blueprint. To do that, it's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is in the sphere track, click on plus, go to event, trigger, then still at 45 frames in this new events track that we've just added, just click on the new keyframe button. So now to connect this event to the sequence of blueprint, we just right click on that keyframe, the one that we've just added, go to properties and when it says endpoint and unbound, just click on create new endpoint. I'm just gonna bring the level sequence blueprint on screen. What you should have is a new blueprint, a new graph come up. Now every level sequencer comes with its own blueprint and we've got a sequencer event and an event graph. For this, we only need sequencer events. And for this moment on, you can do whatever blueprinting you need to do. So let's just drag out of severe event and let's just say add impulse. And we want to add impulse static mesh. There are a few different, different options there, but we could just go with this one. And then it needs a target, which is the sphere. So let's just connect the sphere to the target. And now all we need to do is just put some values into the impulse. So I'm just gonna have a look at the sphere. I'm gonna go in the green, so that's the Y direction. Depending on the size and the weight of your object, this needs to be fairly high. So I'm gonna just put 50,000 to start with, and let's compile and save. I'm actually gonna dock this blueprint now for the time being, that's all we need to do. And that should, that impulse should push it to the side. So let's 
move our timeline scrubber back to zero. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, move my viewport out a bit. I'm going to simulate the level. Now I'm going to press play. And there you go. Now we've actually got a force or a push on the sphere. To finish this off, we'll just add an explosion. So I'm just going to drag off of add impulse and search for spawn emitter. And then spawn emitter attack. Actually, no, we'll do spawn emitter at location. And emitter template, select as asset, drop down and search for explosion. Now the explosion that I'll use here comes with the starter content. So you can just add that if you don't have it. Content browser, click on add, add feature or content pack, and you can add the starter content that way. Now this is a legacy cascade explosion. So a Niagara explosion will be better, but just because it comes with the starter content, I've used it here in this example. The final thing is we just need to give it a location. I'm just gonna drag off a static mesh component and search for get world location and get world location, and then drag off of that into location. So this emitter, this particle effect will spawn at the location of this static mesh, which is the sphere. And I'm just gonna increase the size, maybe up to three, make it a bit bigger. Compile, save, go back into the level, press simulate, and then it's sequencer from zero. I'm just gonna press play. And there you go, we've got a little explosion as well. So that pretty much covers it. If you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comment section.